Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to the Year 1 Ultimate Guide Finale. We are now in the season of winter. We've done the Ultimate Guide now to Spring, Summer and Fall, so if you haven't seen those videos, check them out. Links are in the description. Let's see, can we muster together enough money to unlock the gold clock? Let's jump straight into the video and let's have some fun. We begin the first day of winter by getting the fibre seed recipe from Linus from completing his community quest to fish up trash from the rivers and lakes. We're now going to click on the bush here. This pops Krobus out. He's going to give us a magnifying glass which will allow us to pick up secret letters spread all over Stardew Valley and beyond. We're also going to pick up a new community quest here. So we have Cave Patrol and Aquatic Overpopulation. We're going to go with Cave Patrol today because we need to go into the mines anyway to farm coal, stone and iron. So we might as well kill some skeletons along the way. We're also going to visit our Ginger Island farm and collect all of the starfruit within. All of this starfruit will be of course processed into starfruit wine and that's going to be the main money maker of winter. Starfruit wine sells for an extraordinary amount of gold and depending on if we can accumulate enough starfruit wine or not will be the deciding factor on if we can unlock the gold clock. We're also going to pick up a key quest here. We have a choice of the prismatic range and keys crop. Honestly, don't have enough time for keys crop, so we're going to go with the Grange for a handy 35 key gems. Now, the best way to tackle a quest like this is to just go to the wiki and find out what are the cheapest and easiest items to find that you can easily accumulate to complete this quest. So for red, we're going to go with cherry bombs. Now, these do cost 300 gold a pop, but because we have so much money, we just buy 100 of these. For blue, we're going to go with Georgia Colas, and they're only 75 gold a pop, and we can just go into the Georgia Mart and buy those. If you don't have the Georgia Mart unlocked, you can just purchase them from the saloon as well, from the vending machine, but that's a much longer process. We're also going to process items now today, so we have lots of kegs now on the farm, fill them all up with starfruit, the tunnel is filled up with kegs also, and we're also going to plant some fibre seeds on the ground here. This is going to get lots of fibre back for us over the next few days. We can use that to make more tea saplings if we so desire, if we need bursts of gold. We're also going to smelt bars, and head into the mines to start slaying some skeletons. Now, skeletons is just a side quest. Primarily what we want today is coal, iron, and stone. So if we see the big stone chunks, we'll grab those. If we see iron ores, we'll grab those as well. Upon killing all of these skeletons, we also get a couple of bone swords, which we can sell to Marlin for some extra gold. Upon completing the cave patrol quest, we get 6,000 gold from Gus, which is a very nice reward. And the next day, he's gonna give us the geode crusher recipe which is actually very handy for crushing geodes if you don't want Clint to break them open one slot at a time. So today we are farming bug meat, we're also farming stone and we're farming copper because we need resources to make more cakes, we need stone to make staircases and of course we need bug meat to make a special type of bait that Linus gave us which has a chance of putting up two fish instead of one because we're going to be using a very potent fishing tactic later on in the video for getting money. So I just hand in an items there now to finish off Key's Prismatic Range. That puts me up to 96 Key Gems. I'm going to use these now to purchase Pressure Nozzles, which will increase the range of my Iridium Sprinklers. That means I can put a lot more crops down over on the Ginger Island farm. I also have Heavy Tappers connected to trees here on the farm. I only have a few Heavy Tappers because they are quite expensive to make, but they generate resins twice as fast as regular Tappers. So I'm behind on wood, and I really need to make cakes. So I'm just going to purchase some wood here off Robin. It is very cheap in year one, just 10 gold for a piece of wood. That goes up exceptionally when you get into year two and beyond. I also get Robin to make a shed as well. We fill it up with cakes. Once we're finished with Robin, we're going to take a trip straight over to the quarry here. Get rid of all these ores and we're going to put down tons of seeds, fertilize them up. And this means that we won't have to buy wood off Robin the next time we want to go and make cakes. It'll only take a few days for those trees to fully grow up. I also pay Marlin a visit sell him a couple of weapons that had lying around the place just to get some extra money. I was going to purchase an Iridium Hammer but decided not to because I figured it's too late now to change weapons because I already have upgrades put into the other weapon. I sold a lot of bars there too made a lot of money. Iridium bars sell for 1500 gold a piece if you have the blacksmith perk. I also have my Ginger Island house filled up to the top with kegs. This is going to process starfruit primarily. I also have a lot more trees now on the farm with tappers that's a lot more oak resins for me. That means I can make a lot more cakes. If I want to get the gold clock in winter, I was going to need as many cakes as possible. Hundreds, if not thousands of cakes. Because I had thousands of pumpkins that need to be processed. I also had starfruit that was coming off the Ginger Island farm. 
that needed to be processed every couple of days as well. So I was cutting down trees in the desert, smelting bars inside the mines, and I was getting copper bars now today because I needed those to make more cakes. And it was back to Ginger Island to get more golden walnuts. There was a chance that any of these muscle nodes would yield a golden walnut, but the chances were quite slim. The more golden walnuts I got, the more unlocks I can get in Ginger Island. So back on the farm now in Stardew Valley, we're putting down winter wild seeds. These will yield winter forage bills in a couple of days, and I can just rinse and repeat that tactic until I have a farm filled up with winter forage bills. I hold up a strange doll from the ground here, just beside the bus stop. It's quite the rare artifact indeed, and you can also get a second one from a secret letter if you're lucky enough. That's two strange dolls in total. Now those dolls sell for a thousand gold a pop. You can also give one to Gunther as well, but I sold them because I really need money at the moment. So I enchanted my Iridium Rod, got Master. That means my fishing skill is increased by one. And I did fishing for the whole day in the Lab Cave. So I got the Psychics 101 there, and that's a really rare painting. But we didn't come here to get rare paintings. We came here to make money. And this is probably the best fishing spot in the game to make money, because there's a very high chance you can get lava eels. The next day, we are going to process more starfruit into starfruit wine. Starfruit wine yields much more money than pumpkin juice. So if I have starfruit, I will prioritize that over the pumpkins. Because even though starfruit wine takes longer to process than the pumpkins does, you're going to get a lot more money for the wait time. So I did the fishing event today. I lost because I was spending too much time watching an enemy and had enough time watching my fishing counter. But that's okay. The prizes weren't that great and they won't make a whole massive difference when it comes to getting the gold clock or not. So we're going to pay Sandy a visit today. I'm going to use all my money and purchase as much starfruit as possible. This will ensure that we have no downtime when it comes to the Ginger Island farm because we want that to be growing starfruit 24-7. Speaking of Ginger Island, it's time to take a trip back and collect all of the present starfruit that is there. This is going to get us hundreds of starfruit and we're going to process this now as quickly as possible. All the trees in the quarry have finally fully grown up. We're going to blow them all down to save ourselves time. And that is going to get us enough wood now to make hundreds of more cakes in the near future. The trees that survived the explosion won't survive the axe. So one way or the other, these trees are doomed. <laughs> so when it comes to winter in general, most of the time will be spent processing. Collecting resins, processing starfruit and pumpkins into wine and juices, selling items such as sprinklers that we don't need anymore and other items that we don't need. Because winter is the last season of this guide, and I'm not going to do a year two guide. This is a challenge to see if we can get the gold clock in year one. So it's time for another community quest. This time I had to get five of each Ginger Island specific fish. So I needed the lionfish, the blue discus, and the stingray. Because I had kegs literally all over the map, a lot of days were spent just putting resources into these kegs to get the most out of them. This was a shed here now filled up to the top with kegs. I also had so many tree farms now with tappers that a lot of the day would also be spent collecting these oak resins. This was super important as this allowed me to make even more kegs that we constantly had to put down to get a much larger wine output. It's worth noting too that a full stack of starfruit wine, so 999 pieces of wine, with Artisan will give you over 3 million gold. I also gave a banana into the gorilla there, he gave me back 3 golden walnuts and I spent the rest of the day then just fishing up lava eels here in the volcano because it's a great way to make money. I made over 78,000 gold there from just fishing up lava eels today. It's one of the best fishing spots in the game for money making. The next day, our lovely winter forage bills have fully grown, we're going to collect these now, we're going to make more winter seeds and we're going to plant those back into the ground. So I'm at 110 seeds there in total. I'm going to plant all these down. And when they fully grow up, we're going to do the exact same thing over and over again until we have a huge farm built up to the top with winter forage bills. I also went for a legendary fish today, the glacier fish. Definitely one of the harder legendary fishes, if not the hardest. Some people say that the glacier fish is harder than that of the legend. My opinion is that they're equal in terms of difficulty. Both fish can be, depending on RNG, quite easy to get are nigh impossible. So today I was fishing up stingrays, managed to get five, took me the whole day because it's not a common fish. That's 2,500 gold from Willy and a reward the next day. Speaking of which, it was time to process the wines again. As we can see, the time does go quite fast, especially when you spend half the day, if not the whole day, just processing items into wines and juices. But we were still a good ways off in terms of getting the gold clock. We needed 10 million gold. 
that was several stacks of Starfruit wine and pumpkin juices. So it was time for another key quest, we had let's play a game in Keys Crop, there was no way I was doing Keys Crop, it was way too late in the game for that. Let's play a game is now impossible for me, because I have to beat Lewis Juno Cart. I'm just going to show one instance of Juno Mokart's sped up, so the first level in my opinion is easy enough with practice, most people could beat this after a few attempts. If you manage to get all the fruit on each level, you do get a lot of bonus points, and this really helps when it comes to beating Mayor Lewis. The second level, it's all about trying your best not to go down those frozen slides because you go way faster, it can be hard to time the jumps properly. Now when I get to the third level, this is where things get dicey for me. This is the level where I die the most because that whale is just insanely hard to get past. All of the bubbles that he fires out, he does have one HP on the cart. But when I was finished, I managed to get six spicy eels off Gus and it was down to Skull Cavern the next day. I managed to get four holes here all close to each other. That never happened to me before. So it was going to be a whole day in the Skull Cavern now, just getting resources. Skull Cavern is probably one of, if not the best, resource in the game when it comes to getting all different manners of ores and minerals. You can even get lucky rings inside the crates, which we have gotten on more than one occasion, of course. It's also a great place for stone. Today was a super lucky day. I was getting a lot of holes. And when you get to floor 100 here, you're guaranteed a treasure floor, which is really nice as well. I'm just going to show examples of floors like this that are very small, but they're just packed up to the top with iridium nodes. So I, I'm going to make a ton of money from smelting all those ores into bars now and selling all those iridium bars and gold bars. So we still have strawberries in the greenhouse. Now I don't end up swapping out the greenhouse at all with starfruit, but if I had to replay the challenge, I probably would have, I'd say maybe halfway through summer, attempted to swap out the greenhouse with starfruit and get rid of all the strawberries, but it's up to you. Having the strawberries there can be quite handy as you're guaranteed at least 15 to 20,000 gold every four days. I also went to the night market a couple of times too and I just picked up the paintings that Lupini had because they're quite rare as you can only get those paintings at that event. Back to Ginger Island the next day, we're getting our hands on more lovely starfruit, processing all those into starfruit wine. This is the primary tactic of course. I also prepared an area down at the south of Ginger Island and I put some floor down and I'm just going to fill that area up with cakes. So this is why Ginger Island is so great, you don't have to worry about crows. You don't have to worry about seasons, you can just spam starfruit seeds for the rest of your playthrough and you'll never need to worry about money again. The next day it was all about getting the resins and filling up more cakes with starfruit, converting it into starfruit wine. We were then smelting ores into bars, making more cakes and the cycle continues until we've reached the end of this challenge. 86 more cakes ready to go, I could have made more but I ran out of wood. So because wood is so cheap in year one, I just went back to Robin and I purchased some wood so I can make more cakes. I'm going to fill out the rest of this area now with cakes and this is going to be a huge money maker in a couple of days when I get to collect all of the lovely starfruit wine that these cakes have inside them. As you can see here now it took the bones of a year to get up enough resources to make all of these cakes but it's definitely worth it. Time for another key quest. I'm going to go with four precious stones. I just needed four prismatic shards. I had at least 20 prismatic shards inside the chest from doing Skull Cavern runs. I'm at 420,000 gold today, primarily from selling Iridium Bars. I also sold Iron Bars and Copper Bars because at this stage in the game, there wasn't much of a point in terms of making more cakes. So any resins I got from here on out, I sold also. I made 290 more wild winter seeds. I'm gonna plant those right back on the farm. I had lots of quality sprinklers lying around the place, so I just put them down. I could use the Iridium Sprinklers, but space wasn't really an issue, so I might as well just sell the iridium sprinklers and just use the quality ones. It was time to fill up the quarry again with seeds. The reason why I'm at a tree farm now was just in case I needed to pop out an extra few cakes in the near future, depending on how things were going. But it was just a precautionary method. So I handed in my four prismatic shards at 56 key gems ready to go. I purchased five hoppers, but not to use to deconstruct, as each hopper deconstructed will give you back a radioactive bar, and those bars sell for 4500 gold a piece if you have the blacksmith perk. Unfortunately I didn't get danger in the deep so I couldn't farm these in the regular mines. If I did get that quest earlier on I probably could have made a lot more money in winter as I could have spent my days farming those ores instead of going to Skull Cavern. So we'd one week left now in this challenge and we actually had all of the starfruit processed. We were just waiting for the new starfruit to grow back on Ginger Island so it was now back to processing pumpkins and it was another day of fishing up lava eels just for that extra burst of money. 
We were sent into the greenhouse the next day. Strawberries have come back along with more wines that we get to pick up. And before we knew it, it was time for another key quest. So I'm going to go with Key's Hungry Challenge. Get down to floor 100 in the Skull Cavern without taking any consumables. The trick to this quest is to take the buffs before you go into Skull Cavern. And if you see giant blobs in the Skull Cavern with hearts inside them, kill them to top up your health. Also going down there with staircases can also trivialize the challenge. It was time to prepare for Key's Hungry Challenge. So I was getting iron ores and stone today so I could make ladders and I could also make bombs. I had enough salads there now from purchasing off Gus and Fall that I didn't really need to purchase any more food for healables after I got through floor 100. So this is just my attempt now of Key's Hungry Challenge. As we can see, a heart gives you back 10 health, which is really nice. And I didn't have 100 staircases, so what I'd done was I just used the staircase if it was an emergency. I also got down to floor 100 and I got a buff off Mr. Key, which increases my health by 25 because I unlocked that quest via a secret letter. Once I got past floor 100, I could then take consumables, no problem, and I could make best use of this whole day in terms of farming a cavern with the lovely treasures that lie within. So I was getting loads of Iridium Ores now again today along with Prismatic Shards and other goodies, and all of these Iridium Ores will be converted into bars, and they would also be sold for extra gold. So when it comes to how best to play winter, you can never go wrong with doing Skull Cavern runs. It's always a surefire way that you're going to come out of there with tons of money if you prep property and go on a semi or super lucky day. You'll ensure yourself all the success. It was time to take a trip to the Statue of Uncertainty, 10,000 gold to swap around the farming professions. So because now we were going into the 25th, it was time to select Artisan to increase the value of all our Artisan products by 40%. So I gave Alex here for the Christmas event to Prismatic Shard. That's going to get us a lot of friendship points with him. If I could get him a loved gift that had a silver or gold star or even a iridium star rating on it, I would have got a lot more friendship points. But the best I had for him at this stage of the game was just the Prismatic Shard. Still got two and a half hearts for him though, which isn't too shabby. I got a ruby, then off penny. That's not too bad because you can trade it in for a spicy eel if you're doing more Skull Cavern runs. Today was going to be the last day of our star fruit harvest. So we weren't going to plant anything else on the farm here now because we only had a few days left in winter. All of this star fruit would also be sold. There's no point in processing that because it wouldn't be ready for day 28. So we're going to sell all that star fruit. We're going to process all of the ores we have. I also had several thousand pumpkin here that I just didn't have time to process. So I'm just going to sell all of these pumpkins too. Now I did have the farming park where all these crops are worth 10% more. 10% might not seem like a huge amount, but when you're selling thousands upon thousands of crops, it makes a huge difference. So it's always worth specking into something that's going to benefit you, depending on what action you're doing in this game. The Statue of Uncertainty is probably one of the most important utilities that you have at your disposal, especially when it comes to challenge runs like this. So the quarry was now filled up to the top with trees, and I decided just for sheer satisfaction to come along with some mega bombs and blow the whole place up. It's always really rewarding to just run along here with a magnetism ring and just absorb up all of the wood and the sap and the clay. <laughs> I made over two million gold today and this was just from selling raw crops that we didn't have time to process. If you just take a look at the star fruit there, gold star star fruit sells for 1,237 gold. A gold star pumpkin only sells for 528 gold. So star fruit is unrivaled when it comes to profits. Starfruit is just amazing. The next day, we are up 3 million gold. Now, we haven't sold any of our wines or juices yet. So, at this stage of the game, I was pretty comfortable in terms of if I was going to get the gold clock or not. But now I wanted to see if I could get more than the gold clock. I wondered if I could get the gold clock and all four warp outlets. So, I did some quick mathematics looking at the juices and wines I had in my chests, and I decided to purchase all of the four warp obelisks today. So this was going to be the Earth Obelisk, the Water Obelisk, the Desert Obelisk, and of course the Ginger Island Obelisk. So I had enough to unlock all of these. I had the resources already accumulated. All that was left now was to get the Gold Clock, and that would have been a very powerful Year 1 completed. So it was back to Ginger Island, and today it was going to be a day of just collecting wines and juices. So most of the stuff here now is pumpkin juices because we ran out of star fruit to process. For the whole day now, today on the 28th, we were going to spend it just collecting all of these juices and wines. But the challenge was to collect these and sell them to Pierre before he closes. So I had until 5 o'clock to get all of these items collected. 
So it was actually a lot of pressure to get this done because if I didn't sell everything to Pierre today, technically I wouldn't have got the gold clock, you know, on year one. I would have had to wait until year two and that kind of would have ruined the challenge for me. So I just literally got into Pierre 10 minutes before he closed and I sold him enough wines and juices to make over 11 million gold. What a challenge. I can now get the gold clock prevents debris from spawning on your farm and it makes your fences invincible it's actually a really nice item to have is it worth 10 million gold absolutely not but it is a great flex to get all of these items in year one could i have gotten the gold clock by day 100 i could have if i sold the wines earlier but i really wanted to get everything together which is why i waited until the very last day of year one to see i made over 17 million gold in year one Thanks so much to everyone that watched all my guide videos. I really hope this helps you out in your own farm. Stay tuned for more 100 day style videos and general tips and tricks videos. I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.